Let's turn to Peter Singer for a little bit. Peter Singer is uh, famous for two things around the world. Some would say infamous. He is most famous and most notable for the uh, person who probably did more than anyone else to start the animal liberation movement, animal rights movement, which I'm not going to talk about today. But he's also known as the preeminent advocate of legalizing infanticide. And again, we're not talking about abortion. We're talking about infanticide, killing babies after birth. Peter Singer used to say that parents should have 28 days within which to keep or kill their children, depending on utilitarian value judgments. I noticed uh, about a year ago he gave an interview in which he said, well, you know, there's really not much of a moral difference between a 27-day-year-old infant and a 29-day-year-old infant, so we can't have that, so let's make it up to one year based on a case-by-case -case basis. This stuff keeps spreading. Well, Peter Singer has made several statements, and a lot of times um, his critics are accused of taking them out of context. But I don't think you can take these statements out of context. And let me read just a couple to you. He's talking about Down syndrome babies in uh, his book, um, Rethinking Life and Death, in which he explicitly and quite candidly says we should do away with the sanctity of human life ethic and replace it with a quality of life ethic. We may not want a, a child to start life's uncertain voyage if the prospects are clouded. When this can be shown to be at a very early stage in the voyage, we may still have a chance to make a fresh start. Now, realize what he's talking about. He, he's very adept at using very passive words to talk about very awful things. He's talking about killing. This means detaching ourselves from the infant who has been born, cutting ourselves free before the ties that have already begun to bind us to our child have become irresistible. Instead of going forward and putting all our efforts into making the best of the situation, in other words, instead of unconditionally loving our baby, he goes on to say, we can still say no, in other words, kill the child, and start again from the beginning. You know, the best human beings I've ever met have been Down syndrome people. Gentle, kind, hardworking, forgiving, compassionate. These, I submit, are some of the best traits of humanity, and yet you never hear these traits discussed. At least I haven't by Professor Singer or by other bioethicists. Mainly what they talk about is intelligence. Well, some of the worst people I've ever met have been the smartest. That is not how we should judge people. And I'm not saying intelligent people should be viewed of lower moral worth than stupid people, but they should be viewed the same, not different. Another quote from Peter Singer. This time he was talking about a hemophiliac child. <clears throat> and this is in his book, Practical Ethics, which, of course, is read in virtually every philosophy department, perhaps in the world, at least in the West. When the death of a disabled infant will lead to the birth of another infant with better prospects of a happy life, the total amount of happiness will be greater if the disabled infant is killed. The loss of happy life for the first infant is outweighed by the gain of a happier life for the second. In this point, he's talking about children that parents would have in the future and that they would be improved if they didn't have an older brother or sister who had the disability of hemophilia. Therefore, if killing the hemophiliac infant has no adverse effect on others, what about the baby? It would, according to the total view, be right to kill him. Now, I submit that's not taken out of context. Peter Singer is often described in the media as saying dis um, infanticide should be all right for severely disabled infants. It has nothing to do with disability. It has to do with personhood. Peter Singer does not believe an infant is a person. That's why it is acceptable to kill an infant, not because the infant is disabled. Peter Singer is not a bigot against disabled people, physically disabled people, who are persons in his view, because they've got the appropriate mental capacity. Now, Peter Singer has had some troubles when he goes to Germany and Austria. Because of these value systems, this intense belief in infanticide, he is demonstrated against by people who have a very long memory of the uh, holo medical holocaust in Germany, in which 250,000 disabled infants and disabled adults were killed by German doctors. And they were not 
quote, Nazi doctors in the sense that they were forced by uh, Hitler to do it. They were doctors who had been propagandized in favor of these kinds of value systems from 1920, long before Hitler was a dark cloud on the horizon, starting with a book called Permission to Destroy Life Unworthy of Life by Carl Binding and Alfred Hoch, who said there were three categories of killable people, 1920. People who were terminally ill, people who were unconscious, and those they pejoratively labeled the idiots who were draining society of needed resources. And we've already seen what Joseph Fletcher used that same term. And they said, and this is the first time in my studies I've seen the term, that it was a matter of a right to die. It's the first time I've heard that term, or found the term, the first use of that term. And that it was a healing treatment, they said in this book. That led in 1927 to a survey in which 70% plus of parents of disabled children thought it would be okay for doctors to put their children to sleep. By the time Hitler came to power, the euthanasia consciousness, as Robert J. Lifton calls it in the Nazi doctors, was well established in Germany, but you also had eugenics and all of that going on at the same time, along with social Darwinism, anti-Semitism, and every other ism you can think of in the mother of all death cultures. Infanticide began in Germany <clears throat> in 1939 with a case called Baby Now, or K-N-A-U-R, in which parents, of, parents started writing Chancellor Hitler. And of course, in the, in the 30s, the, the Nazis and Goebbels propagandized even further along these lines. It said some people were less fit than others, and disabled people were drains on society, and we had to have the bulk and all of that myth that... I, I don't have to tell you about. So people began to write letters to Hitler saying, you know, can I have euthanasia or what about my disabled child? I'd like to put him down. And the father of baby Nauer wrote to Chancellor Hitler and said that his child had been born with uh, defective limbs and had other difficulties and he wanted the doctors to be able to kill the child. Hitler, Mr. Compassion, decided to send his personal physician, Carl Brandt, to check it out with instructions to the doctors that if this proved to be true, that they could kill this child and have no adverse legal consequences, which is what happened. Hitler then signed a directive allowing doctors to kill disabled children, and for the next six years they were killed by doctors willingly, not because they were forced, but because they thought they were doing the right thing. Midwives, doctors, if a disabled child was born, would uh, let other doctors know about it. These children got sent to various centers for healing, which was killing. In his book, um, Robert J. Lifton, in his book, The Nazi Doctors, he quotes the father of Baby Nauer, telling the father of Baby Nauer what Dr. Brandt said to him. And I'm going to read this to you, and then I'm going to read you that last quote I had from Peter Singer, and you tell me if you can find any difference. He, Dr. Brandt, explained to me, and again, this is the father speaking, that the Fuhrer had personally sent him and that my son's case interested the Fuhrer very, very much. The Fuhrer wanted to explore the problem of people who have no future, those whose life was worthless. From then on, we wouldn't have to suffer from this terrible misfortune because the Fuhrer had granted us the mercy killing of our son. Later, we could have other children, handsome and healthy, of whom the right could be proud. Dr. Brandt to the father of baby Nauer. Jo Peter Singer in Practical Ethics. When the death of a disabled infant will lead to the birth of another infant with better prospects of a happy life, the total amount of happiness will be greater if the disabled infant is killed. The loss of happy life for the first infant is outweighed by the gain of a happier life for the second. Therefore, if killing the hemophiliac infant has no adverse effect on others, it would, according to the total view, be right to kill him. And I submit that there is no right between Dr. Brandt and Peter Singer. Dr. Brandt was hanged at Nuremberg, and Peter Singer is teaching at Princeton. I find that remarkable and appalling. I don't want Peter Singer hanged, but I don't want him at Princeton, but it's done. But I would hope that the faculty of this university would think quite carefully before it does such a thing again. And look carefully at what Dr. Singer is actually saying. This is a treasure, this university, a national treasure. 
And by bringing Peter Singer here, you have, not you, the university has given him tremendous increase in respect and visibility. And it is harming people. And I frankly resent it. I didn't plan to say that. But it's really infuriating to me. It's like bringing David Duke. You wouldn't bring David Duke. You wouldn't say academic freedom for David Duke. Why do you for Peter Singer when it's the same form of bigotry?